Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. But you know, you know the drill. Go to the corners, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Go to the corners and get all that done so you get notified when I do all this testing because today we're looking at the small block Chevy. Not only that, we're looking at your basic power modifications to your bare bones small block Chevy. We're talking about a two barrel equipped cast iron manifold, smog heads, <laughs> tiny little camshaft. That's our starting point. But we're looking at this in two ways. One, how do we get more power from that? And unlike all of my other videos, how much does it cost? That's right. I'm going to throw in some costs on some of these performance mods and we're going to figure out, well, you're going to figure out, I got this much power. It costs this much money. Is that a good deal? Okay, guys, let's jump right in and find out how much power we can get from your basic upgrade. You know what I'm talking about? A four barrel intake manifold, headers, you know, a small camshaft, even some ported stock heads, and then we'll go even beyond that. But also I wanted to do something that I don't normally do. I'm gonna to try to include pricing on some of these things to give you an idea how much value is there. Okay, we got this much power for this much money and you guys just get to decide, is that really worth it? But our 350 started out as a rebuild, so it was 30 over. We put a forged flat top piston in it with valve relief, which would allow us later on to run lots of camshaft and, and different cylinder heads on this combination. But it, and it helped our compression a little bit here, but we still started out with this uh, rebuilt short block and we installed a set of 882 smog heads. They were all stock. We had a two barrel cast iron intake manifold and a two barrel 2G carburetor. We also installed a very small, mild stock replacement camshaft from the local auto parts store. All the listing said is 180 horsepower, you know, stock hydraulic flat tapping camshaft. We put stock exhaust manifolds on it, ran two inch exhaust out the back and put a distributor in this thing. And what I wanted to do was basically start out at your lowest performance level, two barrel, <laughs> smog era, low compression, small block Chevy and that's exactly what we did and then we'll show you you know what each one of the modifications does and hopefully how much it costs so we're going to start off with our 350 with a two barrel combination it produced 241 horsepower 359 foot pounds of torque so a lot more torque than power we've kind of come to expect that on this two barrel kind of base motor and the first thing we did was install a set of headers on it honestly I expected a lot more from long tube headers compared to stock exhaust manifolds but in this case, on this two barrel combination, we're looking at seven or eight horsepower. The gains were fairly consistent all the way through the curve, but possibly something else was holding this back. It was nice to get gains everywhere. Peak power was up to 248 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 366 foot pounds. So the next upgrade, pretty normal for a guy that has a two barrel small block and that's to put a four barrel on it. In fact, if you were going to get one of these from the wrecking yard or somewhere, you, you probably would get a, a 350 that already has a four barrel on it. But what we did was replace the cast iron two barrel intake manifold and, and carburetor, got rid of that, replaced it with a, another stock cast iron four barrel quadrajet manifold and a four barrel quadrajet. Ours came from the guys at Sean Murphy's, but that's just one that West Tech had sitting around. Ideally, you would just get that from the wrecking yard with your intake manifold, and it would be much, much less expensive. But as you can see, the four barrel manifold offered a good power gain, not, not only a lot more peak power, but a lot more peak torque. Peak power checked in at 278 horsepower, and peak torque checked in at 385 foot-pounds. And it looks like the four barrel made every bit as much torque down below 2,500 as the two barrel did. A lot of guys would say, oh, but the two barrel, you know, get makes more torque uh, that's within a couple foot pounds it's probably a temperature difference there so when you and especially if you're running on just the primary circuitry it works pretty well on a four barrel in fact for mileage and drivability and stuff it's really hard to beat a quadrajet so we're making good power there but we wanted to do what everybody else would do if you have a cast iron quadrajet manifold the one thing that you'd want to do is put some kind of aluminum intake manifold on there so we put a wyan uh, four barrel stealth intake manifold i think it was a stealth and it did it did indeed pick up power it picked up peak horsepower to 287 horsepower but as you can see it lost power all the way up to 4100 rpm and it definitely lost torque where the quadrajet setup and we used the same carburetor on on the wine intake manifold 
but run with the Q-Jet factory cast iron intake manifold. We made 385 foot-pounds, but after installing the YN, it only made 372 foot-pounds. So really, of the two of those, looking at the power and, and obviously the extra cost of the aluminum intake manifold, I'd pick the Q-Jet. But there is an aluminum factory aluminum version of the Q-Jet intake manifold. So if you're looking around at wrecking yards, I think that that's where I would look. So now let's take a look at some other modifications that we've made. I don't want to get too busy here on our dyno graph. I want to be able to differentiate those. So let's jump in on some more mods and find out what works. Okay, guys, let's take a look at some even more modifications on our small block Chevy. You remember we went from 241 horsepower to 300 or 286 horsepower, 287 horsepower. And peak torque went from 359 up to 371 because we lost a little bit with the wind intake manifold. But let's take a look at some other modifications. And so now that we've done the induction system and the exhaust, let's take a look at maybe some cylinder heads. And what we did on this combination was we replaced the factory stock as cast 882 heads with a ported set of 882 heads. And unfortunately, <laughs> I replaced the heads and a camshaft at the same time. And I did this twice. So <laughs> if you're upset about it this first time, know that it's coming again later on. But we installed the ported 882 heads only because of uh, the available dyno time that I had. So we, we did the heads and cam all at one time because we had torn the motor apart. But we put ported versions from the guys at Powerheads ported versions of the exact same 882 castings. We did a pure energy 246 cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. It's very, very mild. In fact, I think it's one of the emissions legal comp cams, but the gains that we got from the ported head, we kept, kept the intake manifold and carburetor the same. The gains that we got from the ported head and cam upgrade, 340 horsepower. Peak torque was right up at 400 foot pounds. So again, good gains in peak horsepower and peak torque, but more importantly, gains through the entire RPM range. So now let's take a look at some more elaborate <laughs> and, and more expensive modifications. After we did the power head upgrade, what we did was uh, upgrade the induction system. You can see that, that that's this highest port point right here, 419 horsepower and 421 foot-pounds of torque. And what we did was replace the YN intake manifold and Q-Jet with a different intake manifold and carburetor. We installed an Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap, kind of the go-to intake manifold for this power range and this RPM range in the small block Chevy, and a Demon, a 650 Demon carburetor. Quite honestly, we probably could have used the Quadrajet with uh, equally well, but we did replace that six, the 650. We did install the 650 carburetor on this intake manifold, and we got good gains. Like I said, over 400 horsepower and, and a good bit over 400 foot-pounds, and it worked out very well. So you guys would have to decide, um, rather than put the wine intake manifold on, maybe just upgrade right to the, uh, the Edelbrock RPM air gap manifold. And then if you're thinking about a carburetor, you could either keep, keep the Q-Jet or step up to one of the performance like Holly's or the other, the newer Edelbrock that they have out now. Again, that's all stuff up to you. I think that they would work equally well. So now let's take a look at our next modification. And unfortunately, like I said, this will be our final one. Once again, I upgraded the cylinder heads and camshaft all at one time. But think about it this way. If you, if you had your combination and you were going to put like the ported head and the pure energy camshaft in, that would be one way to go. You're doing your own porting. Um, you're maybe have, have the mill do a valve job on them, put a camshaft in, and that's a good low buck way to go. If you're going this other route and going to put some sort of aftermarket head on, we put Hollies on. You could put Airflow Research or TrickFlow or any of the many heads that are available. Anything is going to be better than the factory head, and anything is going to be better than a ported factory head. So you can install an aftermarket, an aluminum cylinder head. It's going to be more money. You do get big gains, and you would want to team that with a good carburetor. In this case, we went with a 268 Extreme Energy hydraulic flat tap it there would be no difference in price between the 260 the bigger 268 and the pure energy camshaft i don't think that there's any difference at summit between those two camshafts i'll go ahead and put the numbers up here but if you were going to pick that if you were going to pick the the intake manifold and and camshaft and cylinder head upgrade you just pick the bigger versions all together so you'd have the rpm air gap you'd have some sort of performance aluminum head which is going to make more power because it flows more and it's going to be lighter weight so it's going to be better every way and the camshaft would always cost the same so <laughs> there we have it pricing <laughs> performance you guys get to decide is it worth it
I'm Richard Older. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More of this kind of testing and others coming up. Okay, guys, as promised in the video, here is a recap of all of the modifications we made to the small block Chevy, the power gains that were associated with those modifications. And then if you take a look, I've also included cost and then some notes on all the modifications. So if you guys can take a look here, you can see what the gains were, see what the costs are and decide for yourself. Hey, does this have bang for the buck? Check it out.